What's up, guys? We are here for the NSX podcast. This particular car has been getting a lot of attention the last couple of weeks that it's been here at the Roman showroom. Um, and uh, as I mentioned, we're going to bring up some uh, guests that are either an NSX guy or NSX owner or that particular car's owner. And today we got Nadim. Nadim is our Honda guy. He's had a beautiful, beautiful NSX in the past. He's got lots of experience. So we're going to kind of chat about the car and tell you guys what we uh, know about the car. I appreciate you uh, inviting me on. And um, it's crazy to hear that I'm the Honda guy. But talk about this NSX. That's you never true. really know what you have until it's gone. I mean, I've had an S2000. That's how we met. Uh, so definitely, like, the Honda blood runs strong with us. So you've got a bunch of S2000s here. Now you've got a bunch of NSXs here, which is, which is super sexy. But I was beyond, beyond stoked when I saw you grab another NSX, and especially a gem like the one that we have behind us here. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm excited to get into it. But before I get into it, how'd you get your hands on this? So this NSX was actually a pretty cool story. Um, we have a wholesaler that we use a lot. I actually used to work for that company. They always have really, really good cars. And um, this NSX just popped up. And uh, crazy story on it, too. So it's a one-owner car. Um, lots and lots of service records. I was about uh, to be the second owner, by the way. I know, yeah. <laughs> We're going to talk about that, too. So... Lots of service records. Uh, it's a Comtech supercharged, one owner, 37,000 mile car, five speed manual, and pretty much in beautiful, beautiful shape. So when I saw it come up, and as I've mentioned in the past, most of our purchases, obviously we find it, find it from some private collectors and things like that, but we still buy a lot of the cars from auctions from wholesalers that specialize in these. So that's how I find it. We just found it through a wholesaler that specializes in these. I mean, when you say wholesaler, there's probably a lot of viewers that are like, what do you mean a wholesaler, or, you know, auctions or dealer to dealer? You know, from a buyer's perspective, which is what I'll mainly kind of chat about. But, you know, we search, offer up forums, you know, you have different friends that are selling cars and ideally you grab it from another enthusiast. But in your world, you have kind of like an off market uh, access to mm -hmm. vehicles that kind of uh, pass through hands. You know, somebody, a different part of the nation might be able to you know, get a, get a nice little garage find, and then that kind of becomes available to you mm -hmm. through your network. Definitely. So you brought up a good point. So, you know, you find it from another enthusiast, you find it from Craigslist, offer up, whatever the case may be. But in all reality, when you think about it, the real gems don't really make it to the market because you think about it, somebody that owns a car like this or, you know, those Zanardis, which we'll probably talk about that too in a second, the people that own these cars don't have the time and patience to um, go on Craigslist and meet with 50 different people to sell their cars. So they will find sources that are trusted sources um, that will pay them top dollar for the car and they write them a check and then the car gets shipped to a dealer auction that we're you know, uh, able to purchase from. And in that case, we know the car's vetted well. Uh, we can see the history of it, so there's no surprises of you know us buying a car and then we find out that it had some bad history. So all that stuff is um, checked before we purchase it, and um, that's where all those buyers, majority of the buyers, sell them to. Another big one that I always mention is CarMax. They have the biggest uh, marketing when it comes to trade-ins. So we find some crazy, crazy gems there with five, ten thousand miles. Uh, for example, the 80 series Land Cruiser that was just, you know, everybody was going crazy over on Bring a Trailer. I think it sold for like $150,000, $60,000. That was sold on, Bring a, uh, on CarMax about a year and a half, two years ago. And you wouldn't think that CarMax would have a car like that, but it was just a regular trade-in in amazing shape. What comes to mind is, I mean, if I was to translate that, is almost like it's a consignment deal, you know. You know, I've got something in my garage that I, mm -hmm. I want to unload. Like you mentioned, I don't have the time to sit there, post it for sale, take the pictures, clean it up, get it, get it for sale ready, right? Mm -hmm. Retail ready. Um, and then the brand. You mentioned CarMax has a, a, has a good reputation for, for that. Um, I think your brand matters too. The cars that have kind of passed through your hands. I remember mm -hmm. you had an R8 at one point, one of very few V8 twin turbo R8s that was gated. Gated, yep. It was a, you actually went and uh, picked it up with me. It was a... Um, gated twin turbo it was a sheepy twin turbo for a v8 so they don't make uh, v8 turbo kits anymore so yeah so it was, it was a, a one -off. pretty one-off kit uh, you know the owner of sheepy um and they didn't make it anymore so uh, that was also a card that we purchased uh, through a wholesaler that mainly dealt with high-end exotics so they didn't want to deal with a you know yeah. entry-level r8 so they auctioned it off and we purchased them from them so that's the the people that we typically purchase from 
So it's funny how this happens. Um, a friend of ours, Sean, he got he got into another NSX, and then you know we're chatting about, all right, you know, are we going to recreate this this trifecta of NSXs again? And I was good. I was in retirement. I was enjoying my CRV, two hundred thousand miles, mm -hmm. wash it twice a year, and you know he kept pulling up. He started to modify a little bit. He did an OEM plus to look. He had a red one this time around, and it's like, damn, I think it's about time we get into another one. I started chatting with Ali about it, and the way the universe works, I don't know if it took a week or two. Before I get a call, hey Nadim, I got an NSX. What do you think about this one? And turn my world upside down. I mean, I couldn't focus at work. I think I was, I think I was in the office. I was, I was sitting with my AD, and I'm not even paying attention to him. I'm looking at your messages and phone calls about this car, um, and and then I, I saw what within 24 hours you had possession of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I know as a buyer, um, you were very interested in that car before you purchased your new toy. And um, I kind of want to get your thoughts on, as a previous owner of a very beautiful NSX, which we'll post some pictures of that car in here, uh, what's your thoughts on this car? What stands out to you on this NSX? And what can you tell me that you appreciate on the car? No, of course. Uh, here, let me pass this over to you. <clears throat> so, I mean, as you can imagine, if you, if, if you reflect back on anything you've done once and you stepped away and you were to do it again, there's things you would do differently. There's, there's, there's now being in that seat there's there's small details you pay attention to um for me it was uh, that my previous nsx was my first nsx uh you think hondas you think Acura's, you think you know what you're getting into but uh, that caliber of car there's small details that are kind of hidden um <clears throat> so you, you it was a really tough decision between this car and what i ended up purchasing um i think i called i called ben i was on many phone calls many hours with him i was talking to you i was talking to sean i was talking to different friends I was like you know what do you what do you see me getting back into and um, ultimately i decided with this other car, and, and I'm gonna be honest, and I'll say it here, I think I'm regretful. I think I'm regretful. I think okay, I should. Okay, you can bet on your own. Bring a trailer. I think I should have landed. I'll take the GT3 with, as trade in. <laughs> so I ended up buying a GT3, um, and again, similar to what you described earlier, that GT3 was off market. Um, it was from another enthusiast. The the uh, it's a it's a good friend of mine, who I've done business with, and he ended up upgrading to a Dot2, and you know through through conversation. You know, we, we worked out a deal to where I landed the GT3, and, and, and it's a gem of its own. But every time I come back and I see this NSX, and then I'm doing the restoration to my standard myself, and you're kind of helping me with some projects with that GT3. I'm sure we'll talk about what you're doing for me. That car is here right now with you. Mm -hmm. uh, you you've done, you know, you're, you're going through the undercarriage. You've done some ice blasting. You've done some aluminum, uh, the, the, the metal restoration that you've kind of introduced to the shop. But that is, you know, a burden to me time I'm having to make to do those small restoration projects, you know, fixing little clamp seals, you know, different maintenance, seeing the turnkey, the A to Z easy kind of button that you've created for this NSX and how you're doing it. And I'm like, man, I, I would have loved to just get into this NSX and the condition it's in right now and started to enjoy it. Like here I am right now. I don't have the GT3. I'm not enjoying it. I'm having to wait where this car is ready. Um, so if I, if I can get into it, some of the things that I would look at right away. I mean, from the exterior, I remember I was the first one to wash it. And um, I pointed out to you, I was like, hey, you know, here's, here's it looks like a, a standard NSX. I think in one of your episodes, you chatted about how you restore cars, how you take it from what is an amazing condition to, you know, what you deem for Roman Motor Company as being retail ready or, or auction ready. Uh, in this case, bring a trailer. You did a paint correction on it. Um, you see a lot of red NSXs, you know, the red black top. It's, 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 it's a classic look. Um, we have, you know, local here in SoCal, we've got some, you know, we've got a white one. We've got uh, a few yellow ones uh, and, and plenty of red ones. Um, and then there's, there's this, there's a, what is this, a 91 or 92? 91. It's a 91 Berlina black. Um, what, I, what I love about this one is it's a fixed top. A lot of people shop for that 94, 95 T top. That's kind of like the dead zone because you're still getting the, uh, the 3.0 motor and the five-speed transmission you bump up to that 97 you're getting a six-speed 3.2 but it's the targa you don't have the rigidity of that aluminum one piece you know you, it's compromised with with the uh, acura or honda i think they put like a rear brace in there but i always wanted that fixed top regardless of the 3.2 and the six-speed i think the nsx is true when it when it's a fixed top and that's what this offered um Yes, it's five-speed. Yes, it's a 3.0. But what meant more to me when I, when I got in the driver's seat of this car is how buttoned up all the plastic pieces were. From the center console, I think before I had a carbon fiber center console, I had a doubled in. This, I, I never really appreciated the OEM radio and the fact that when you turn the knobs, it clicks mm -hmm. the way it's supposed to. 
all the 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 display works and so they're not di- and stuff, yeah. yeah they're not dimming your ac works the the radio works and um a small touch when you kind of go into the shifter and you, and you hit the little space right right behind that shifter a lot of the plastic is really brittle in the nsx for whatever reason and you know you work on it once you start to you over tighten a small screw and you, and you crack the plastics and and, and these are you can't really replace them. Mm-hmm. And in the back of your head, you always know that there's a cracked piece somewhere in your dash or wherever, and it creaks and it cracks, and this car doesn't have that. So for me, that meant a lot. Mm-hmm. Now, what value do you associate with that? <coughs> That's up to the buyer. Definitely. Right? I noticed you mentioned, um, I be- obviously, you were the first one, like you mentioned, that washed it because you had the car like the first day or two. Um, yeah, I, I, <laughs> it, was, it was getting loaded here, and I was like, I was here with you yeah. getting unloaded. And I was like, yeah, yeah, so... Uh, so you mentioned uh, when you washed it, you said there was no leaks, right? I personally, honestly, didn't even realize that that was a thing. So you said right, the taillights right. don't leak, the windows don't leak. What's, what's your take on that? So I had an O2. And um, the first thing I did when I had my O2, I had the, I had the taillights remanufactured, resealed. I had an LED upgrade done. Uh, a gentleman here in SoCal that does a great uh, job with uh, you know, doing like a retrofit LED taillights. Um, and it was great. It was the way I was able to get that seal. But... You know, when you wash your NSX, being that it's a mid-engine, there's, there's certain areas you avoid, you know, a lot of heavy water flow. Um, one thing you want to look for is, you know, you pop the trunk, you look around the carpets, the grommets, the wet, the, the like rubber seal around the trunk. Mm-hmm. You look at if, if, if it's loose or not, if it has any play. There was, there was nothing. There mm-hmm. was no water anywhere. And to me, that was huge. These are things that are hard to avoid in any aged vehicle. At mm-hmm. the end of the day, it's, it's just wear and tear and just weathering. Um, so that was really impressive under the car. There was, there was nothing that, you know, there was no water getting anywhere. It wasn't supposed to, um, a lot of times when you wash an NSX and you turn it on, you got to be careful, let everything dry out because this is, this is in the condition it's in. It, it had no issues. It, it fired right up, had no, 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 no hiccups, no hesitation. Um, going around the car, all the panels, everything was lined up. Uh, there, there is all, you know, all the, all the little grommets were where they were supposed to be, but for me, the interior. I'm telling you. The, the interior is definitely clean on this thing. The man. leather, the handles, there's no fading, no chipping in the paints. The steering wheel still is, is the leather is still rich on it. Um, the, the black doesn't have that crazy gloss from somebody washing it with whatever product over the many years that they've owned it. It's still in that OEM satin, that whatever finish that Honda has. I know you pointed that out to me with S2000 dashes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, I think the 08s yeah. have a more of a dry finish and then uh, the early generations have a little bit more of a shinier finish from whatever cleaning product you, you end up using. Yeah, on so it's, it's common for people to, uh, when they detail cars, they, um, they typically will, you know, when they, they clean it up, it's a misconception that you're supposed to spray some sort of, you know, product that makes it shiny. But if you see a brand new car that you go to a dealership, whether it be a Honda Civic or a 911, the dash, the leather... Or we can use a 3 Series, for example. Um, the leather is supposed to be like a satin or matte finish. And the goal is always to, to maintain that finish. And unfortunately, over the years, a lot of people, when it's not done properly, they, they spray certain things. And then your dash is shiny, and then it kind of reflects on the window and stuff. So, um, yeah, definitely this one's very, very clean. Um, when we've cleaned it, too, we do steam cleaning on the dash and stuff. So we use some dry ice cleaning, but not on this car. It's already clean. Um, when that's done, we maintain that original finish. So if you see this NSX, you guys will see the pictures and everything. It has that original beautiful leather finish that it's supposed to have. And um, yeah, it's definitely condition-wise on the interior, definitely stands out. Um, the other question I was going to ask you is, what, what do you think of the supercharger? Because I have my own opinions on that and, and NSXs in general. I was, I was waiting to get into that. I wanted to, if, if I can, talk a little bit about the paint. Um, I had a black car before. Yeah, your and, was black, yeah. And I tried my best to keep that thing clean. And you guys always know me. I wash my car in between drives. At the end of every drive, I'm dusting it. I'm wiping it. You know, I'm thinking I'm doing the right things as you described. You know, as an owner, you think you're doing the right things, keeping this kind of condition you are. But you don't realize you're adding scratches. You're adding layers and layers of different products that just just leave a residue. And I ended up repainting my S2000 a completely different color because I just couldn't. It only looked nice when it was clean. And it had the swirls, it had the blemishes, and somehow here you've got a 91 that, I, mean, I just want to take a bite out of that rear end. I mean, it just <laughs> looks delicious. Yeah. Um, so kudos to you. I've always leaned on you for like how to, uh, you know, you have the history in the, in the paint corrections and maintaining the vehicle. And then, you know, I've been kind of mod hungry and mod crazy. 
Uh, I think with my NSX, as soon as I had bought it, I had stockpiled, you know, from wheels, coilovers, you know, full, you know, header, high full cat exhaust system, this part, that part, and then I kind of dumped everything on at once to transform the way my car looked. Have, if I was to do it again, I mean, behind us, you're looking at it, that OEM plus ride height, slightly lower. You've got the, the, the OEM wheels with the right tires um, and then the supercharger. So if, if there's one mod that you would do to an NSX, if you look at the community, there's a lot of people that do like a full engine out, you know, twin turbo build, uh, HQ does that, and, and, they're, and they're, they've got that locked down to, to a T on, yeah. on how they would do a single or twin turbo build for you. Um, and how to, you know, get a, a healthy power out of it. I was surprised that what this supercharger did, because my S2000 was supercharged. Mm -hmm. And then I had to add a lot of supporting mods around it to get more power. You know, I had to uh, get a smaller pulley and, you know, I, I, I don't know how many belts I snapped, but this car makes up for, we talked earlier about a 3.2 with the six speed versus the 3.0 yeah. five speed. And that's probably one thing that everybody would say, like, oh, I would love to get into a, you know, a 3.2 liter NSX, that, that extra little bit of torque and power, that extra gear, that ratio just really improves the, the, the driving behind the car. Get behind a supercharged NSX, and I think your mind will easily change. Yeah, so NSX is, um, here's the hookah. When it came to the NSX's power, I don't think I was ever a big fan of it. Um, I've always driven your NSX in the past and a couple other NSXs. Uh, mostly and that's what it was for me and why I ended up deciding against it I was like because I hadn't driven it yet yeah I was like ah you know at the end of the day it's 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 underpowered um, it's a it's a looker it's amazing it's beautiful and you sit in the the, the cockpit it's timeless it's, it's driver focused but I wanted a little bit more power and a out of a vehicle which, which is why I went to the, the GT3 yeah um, and then when you drove it and I and I drove and I was like man yeah. <laughs> you didn't tell me this sooner. I think the, the supercharger definitely fixes that exact problem because stock NSXs, I hate to say it, but I think they're a little bit faster than S2000. Maybe well, sometimes not, the same Not power. even. Yeah. That's the thing. That's why I was happy in my 3.2, 6-speed with the, with, with the bolt-ons. It, yeah. it gave you that little bit of oomph that you needed around a corner, on-ramp, exiting. Yeah. Um, I think uh, I, did a, I did a quick pull with uh, a, a friend of ours, Jeffrey. He had a F80 M3 and, and top end freeway pulls like it keeps up that this motor breeds really well. It drives very well in the higher RPMs, which is what Honda's known for. But you're telling me that with this supercharger, we solved for yeah. the, the dead spot in the low end. Yeah, with the when I drove this um, compared to most other NSXs, the biggest uh, difference I noticed was the fact that, you know, you got the low end and you got a lot of mid range. So NSX is a beautiful car, obviously, but if I'm spending, you know, a hundred grand or majority of the NSX is over a hundred grand, you definitely feel, you know, left out a little bit on the power side because they're very slow. But when I drove this, um, one of the first days I actually drove it right down the street right here, I was very surprised at how quick it was. Um, and I felt more comfortable pushing it a little bit once we did the dyno tune and making sure that everything is safe. So actually pushing it, now it's got, I would say, just the right amount of power because then it keeps up with, you know, the handling that it has, the looks that it has, and the overall driving feel that it has. So. That's, you talked about feeling comfortable pushing it. That, that's really it. Um, what did I do? I, I did a side delete on the GT3. I, uh, I stripped the bolt. And I'm like, oh, no problem. It's a small bracket. I call in. It's a $300 bracket for a tiny for, little bracket for what would be a $5 AutoZone part, thinking, oh, let's just grab the OEM yeah, one. Yeah. Um, whereas here, the, the cost to maintain and, and service your NSX is, I mean, what, like a fourth, a fifth of the cost of maintaining any other car in that same purchase price? Definitely. Yeah, and that's why you brought up a good point maintenance wise. Um, they're not, they're definitely not like super cheap to maintain. Like it's not a Honda Civic by any means, but when it comes to the reliability of it, when we got this car, luckily it didn't need a whole lot. You know, the only thing we noticed that was wrong with it that I could kind of smell it was the valve cover gasket. So we got that done. We did the spark plugs. We did a compression check, which by the way, it's very, very strong motor. And then on top of that, just to be extra safe, we took it to Ramon, which is uh, Nigel Motors. You NSX community would know who Nigel Motors and Ramon is. And um, I took it to him as a pre-purchase inspection, even though he's a little far, he's about like an hour and a half away from us, but he's the one guy that I've always trusted with the NSXs. And I took it to him to kind of have an extra look on it to make sure mechanically and overall the way he looks at it, the car is solid and he gave it the green light. I think the only things he noticed that was wrong was um, 
We have the list of it, but I believe it was uh, one of the AC lines was leaking, which was just a grommet. We already replaced that, um, so that's taken care of. The axle boots were leaking, like slight bit. Uh, we took care of that. We put brand new axle boots, and there was like a drop of oil, like literally right under the engine oil pan. There was like a drop of oil. So we checked, there was no more leaks, and I think that was mainly from the valve cover gasket. So when you think about it, a supercharged car, um, all the maintenance that needed to be done is already done, and even when we had to do the little bit of maintenance, it was just valve cover gasket. It didn't need, you know, like a European car. In your case, let's bring up the GT3. Um, when you work on that, for example, control arms, bushings, everything on that is extremely expensive. My, so I need rotors right now. <laughs> and they're not cheap. Yeah, you got <laughs> my, carbon ceramics. My rotors alone, good God. Yeah, which I, the rotors, you brought up a good point. We replaced the rotors on this already. We did uh, brand new rotors all around. We did brand new tires. Um, I think we did the brake fluid pads. Everything got done. And still, cost-wise, it's extremely reasonable how much you spend to maintain this car. I think my bracket costs more than the service you just put Probably, into it. yeah, yeah. I was, I, was pretty, I was pretty excited to know that, you know, what, what I kind of, I know you, I had a set of eyes on it. I gave you my look over, things that, you know, I did, when I had my NSX, I, I forked over the money. I did the full engine out service, you know, mm -hmm. all the gaskets, grommets, the belts, everything that needed to be changed was changed on that vehicle. Which so seems I, like on this one is already changed too. Exactly. Yeah. So mm -hmm. when I looked at it here, and I remember I pointed out, I was like, okay, let's, let's, you know, turn some attention to your valve cover gaskets, just that extra bit of wear that might come from the supercharger in the, in the, in the added power. But otherwise, all your belts look great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And another thing to mention, too, when it comes to maintenance that needs to be done is the uh, AC conversion. That's a, I think you, uh, yours was already done, but you've dealt with that in the no, past. No, so... Uh, it does, it's not needed on, on the O2s. Correct, it's, yeah, it's, it's already done. It's, yeah, it's the first gen's here, and that's the first thing I pointed out to you when, when, we, t when we took delivery of the car. That's for, you're like, what are you looking at? It's the first things I looked at for generation. I was like, bro, this is, this is a gem. Whoever had this car, mm -hmm. it, it was me and another life. Uh, you know, there's one thing you can do that make, you know, you know coilovers, exhaust, you know, mod happy, but, I mean, at our age, now we're, we get service maintenance happy. That's what we yeah. get most excited yeah. about is, you know, how do you get this gem to drive another, t uh, another decade? So the AC has been converted. It's stamped. It's certified. Um, what else did we catch on it? Uh, your windows. If you guys don't know, anytime, if you got a buddy in an NSX, go, go put his window down and, and then put it up. And you're going to notice how slow they go up. And, they go down. And, it, and it made me so mad because the same year, Acura Legend, <laughs> the windows would work just fine. Mm -hmm. But for whatever reason, whatever part Honda sourced for, for the window regulator and the guides, you're, I mean, you're sitting there and you're, and you're pushing it up and I'm, and I'm pulling on my O2, I'm, I'm, I'm pushing the window up. Mm -hmm. And if you remember, we, we changed the guides on that yep. to help it go up and down sooner. And I mean, what did you think of the windows on this <laughs> the one? First nice day, and smooth. Did, did you remember yeah. the first, you're like, what are you doing again? I, I was rolling the windows up and down. I was like, dude, are you kidding me? They're smooth. Not a hiccup. They were going down uh, with no fight. Yeah. What do you think of the mods on the car? Cause I know uh, myself included, I'm not a big fan of mods, and I have my own opinion on modified cars. W what's your take on how modded this particular NSX is? So it's going to come down to the buyer, right? There's your buyers. Your buyers going to have a certain budget they're shopping within, and they're either going to want, you know, as as close to original as possible, or something that's, you know, period correct or mod correct, like what brand modifications did you go with? So what's correct for this car at this time was Comtech, right? Uh, Comtech it w was, was leading for the S2000 when it comes to the superchargers and their headers. So it has the right supercharger on it. I know there's some other options out now. You know, there's always somebody that will innovate the game, but at mm -hmm. the time with this vehicle, whoever owned it, they did the right mods. They have the Comtech supercharger, um, all the supporting mods around it. As far as, it, this this has this has headers, right? Yes, it's got the Comtech headers on it. Yep. Yep. So <clears> verified <throat> Comtech headers, um, and then you have an array of kind of parts that go with it. Correct. Yeah. So it does have the I believe the stock headers. Um, it does have now we put the stock exhaust back on because I kind of wanted to make Spirit. it like you said period correct. And I absolutely love it. Um, it does have um, does some uh, other rotors and stuff, but yeah, it does have a couple different stock parts. That has the stock ECU, all that stuff does come with it. Yep. Got it. So this has. Oh wait, I forgot. This has. It has a standalone AEM. Mm -hmm. yep. I mean, that alone is. is Big enough. money. Yeah. Yep. So my take on this car's mods, because um, I wanted to mention that, because a few people asked, you know, how it feels, how it drives, how much power it makes, and all that. So. 
When I it mean, comes if, to, if, I'm going to cut you off because the first thing you're going to do to NSX, it's got, it, it comes with a monster truck ride height. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and and I went through two or three sets of coilovers before I landed on KW V3s. Mm -hmm. And the first set of coilers I went to, super bumpy, because again, there's not a lot of options for the NSX, um, unless you jump to like super top tier things that mm -hmm. is just unreasonable for a street driven car. Yeah. KW V3s. The perfect setup, in my per opinion. Perfect setup for the NSX. Um, so you have KW V3s on this, so you're able to achieve that OEM plus ride height. Um, what else? Uh, you you have the supercharger. I mean, if you, if you want to Google it real quick, what it costs a supercharger NSX and then the I supporting think, uh, mods around Gene, it. I think Gene, we saw my Garage Collective last week. He just did his, right? He did the clutch and the supercharger. He said, well, like 13, 14 grand, I think he spent or more. How much did he spend? I can't remember. More. It was like it was like 20 plus. Oh no way. Yeah, when you when you get to the supercharger and the supporting mods, and then yeah. not to mention the labor around mm -hmm. it. Yeah. So a lot of people focus on a car that has the parts installed. They're not factoring in downtime, time away from your car. Yep. And then yeah, all that. and then the labor to do it. The um, suspension definitely stands out 100% because uh, most of my S2000s and your NSX, you end up having KWs, I believe, right? Yep. Eventually, I, yeah. Eventually, I landed on KW V3s, um, and I was sold. Yeah, it keeps it um, kind of keeps it that original stock feeling. Um, I would say not not the stock feeling height, but the stock f uh, feeling driving feel. So I agree. KWs are the right suspension for the car, but Take me, take me through the list, A to Z. As far as mods go? Yeah. For like upgrades? Um, the list is not that long, surprisingly. So my goal, and I think for the previous owner's goal, was also to kind of give this car that OEM plus and basically fill whatever gaps that it had when it came to performance, the looks and everything. So, and when I purchased the car too, I wanted to make sure that we kind of maintain that same you know, idea behind the car. So. As far as modifications go, I think the biggest one that's going to stand out is going to be obviously the supercharger, and it's a Comptic supercharger. So you know, it's a basically a dealer installed supercharger um, that doesn't really take away a lot from the car. So earlier I said I have my own opinions about the modified vehicles. We have one right here, my track car S2000. It's a shop car, and I hate to say it, but I do not like that car. I cannot take it on the street. I cannot take it on the canyons. I can barely take it to the track because that thing is just overly modified. You know, it drives amazing for the 10 minutes that it does work. Um, you have to trailer it. You can't take it to the canyons because it's on 85. You can't take it down the road because it's way too uncomfortable. The diff is too loud. Blah blah blah. This car with the Comtex supercharger, unless you really push it, you don't know that the car's you know supercharged. Um, it drives NA. If it you drives, haven't driven a supercharged car, it's, it, there's it no lag. It drives like a stock car. One of the things that I removed from the car, it did have an aftermarket exhaust, beautiful exhaust, which I will include with the um, sale of the car if the owner wants to keep that. Um, it was a little bit too loud for my taste. And even if it wasn't loud, I, I don't think it was super loud, but um, my goal was to kind of make it look like almost like a stock S1000, feel like a stock or NSX, and feel like a stock NSX. So in this case, we put the stock exhaust back on. And now when you turn on the car, when you drive the car, you're driving it on the freeway, everything, 100% stock feeling. The KWs, we talked about it. Um, the reason why I've always been a fan of KWs and KW V3s in general is because it retains that stock feeling suspension. So you're not on the freeway bouncing up and down and being uncomfortable like some of the, and again, that's not just cheap coilovers. There's some expensive coilovers that you spend a lot of money, but they're made for the track. So when you take it on the street, it's uncomfortable. KWs, beautiful balance between handling, also the you know street comfort. Um, wheels, for example, we also want to make sure that the car looks good, feels good, and in this case, we went with the stock wheels that came with the car. I just added the spacers, so gives it a little bit better stance without taking away from the original OEM look that it has. And I personally, I think I, we talked about this when I first got the car, I wanted the silver wheels because I just wasn't a big fan of the chrome until I put the new tires on it, we put it on the car, and I was like, holy crap, this just looks right, you know? So it looks like it fits the show. Yeah, with, with the, the black showroom. paint, the way the black is just absolutely perfect color, um, the chrome that the wheels has, and we dry ice plastic the wheels, we graphene coated them and everything, and with the new tires that we put on, because they are pretty sticky tires, overall just looks absolutely beautiful. Uh, another one of the mods that I should mention is gonna be the iBox sway bars. It doesn't take away from the way the car drives, but when you take some corners, the handling of the car is a lot more stable, so you have a lot less body roll. And uh, with the supercharger, and you can agree with this, um, another issue that most people run into is once you add more power, even a little bit of power, is gonna be the clutch. 
So you're always going to have an issue of even though your car makes the power, you put on the dyno or you take it on the street and you start pushing, you start slipping the clutch. So the clutch has already been upgraded. When I took it to Ramon, which we mentioned, he is one of those people that just looks at the car and you can tell like what's good, what's bad about it. And he mentioned that it feels like an OS Gaiken clutch, which is one of the best clutches you can get for a majority of the cars. So it seems like it's got an OS Gaiken clutch. Obviously, we haven't removed the transmission to put the clutch. It came like that. Um, clutch is done. Supercharger makes it feel good. Suspension feels great. Overall, all the mods focus is to just upgrade the way the car feels and looks without just going crazy no. over the mods. Absolutely. The car, car works as it and should. And the AEM ECU. So another issue with most stock NSXs and most stock cars, when you do add extra power, you're going to run into fuel issues. You're going to run into tuning issues. So this already has the um, AEM ECU standalone. Comes with the stock ECU if needed, and also has upgraded injectors. I'm not sure what the size is because we didn't remove those. It came with it. Uh, but when we tuned it, the fuel ratios, everything was just spot on. No issues whatsoever. Got it. Got it. So we talked about okay. We got a one owner NSX Berliner Black. It's been paint corrected, graphene coated. Uh, you got blasted. Th that's what I want to get into next. Uh, but we have. The right wheels, the right suspension, it's spaced out correctly, it's stanced as it should have been, you know, out of the factory line. Now, things that you do different, you know, your brand here, because um, I've, I've said this before, you, you take these cars, these projects, these restaurants as if they're your own. You, you wouldn't release it mm -hmm. if it's not the way you would want it. So walk me through those, those steps there. So when it comes to the recon process of it, um Depends on the car. Could be extensive. Could be you know a fairly easy process. In this case, it was pretty easy when it came to recon because we didn't really need to do a whole lot. So we did the paint correction, and we've mentioned in the other post, it's a full you know decontamination process, and then we polish the paint, we remove all the swirls and everything. That's why it looks as beautiful as it does. Um, and after that, we graphene coat it. So in the future, whoever maintains the car, washes the car, is not going to get swirls easily on the car, and that's a permanent fix. It's not like a quick little wax that makes it look good for two weeks. It's permanently removing the swirls. And then on the undercarriage, which um, we focus on all, a lot on lately, is uh, NSX has pretty much all aluminum body and aluminum suspension bits. So it looks really, really good when those pieces are clean. So when we dry ice blast it, it removes basically any kind of debris, grime, dust, anything that may have been in the last, you know, 25, 20, 30 years. Do you have a video of that? Yeah, we'll post it. We have we have full video of, uh, we actually shot the full video of the NSX getting dry as blasted, so it shows like the before and afters. And then um, we also obviously did the uh, the new tool that we got is the tick brush, um, the weld cleaning. So what that does is it essentially, the brown oxidation that the exhaust gets over the years, it removes that and brings it back to the original finish. So. When you see the undercarriage of this car, it basically looks like a brand spanking new car. There's, if, if you go on the market and you try to buy a car at this budget, I mean, these are things that aren't going to be done to a car. I mean, these are services that people mm -hmm. pay for to have done. Yeah. Two, three grand at least for the undercarriage. Yeah. Being that it's available to you, I mean, from a buyer's perspective, you're getting this, this full-on package recon that's kind of already been done to the car. Yeah. Um, what, what makes me excited, again, I, I'm talking from the buyer's perspective, is you have... A, you know, a, a benchmark here that I can now, if I get into this car, I have my ability to put my stamp on it, to make it unique to me. If there's a, if, if there's a different front lip I want, a different set of wheels I want, I can get right into that um, yeah. part of enjoyment of the car mm -hmm. versus the six months of owning a car and doing the stuff that you've already done. Yeah, 100%. I mean, that's the goal is to be able to deliver a vehicle that's ready to enjoy. Yeah. And of course, like you say, you can put your stamp on it, you can modify it the way you want, or you can keep it stock, or whatever the next owner may want to do. But our goal is to, when you get the keys to that car, um, it's something that you can hop in, enjoy, without having to do anything. That's that's always been the goal, and that's what we strive for. You mentioned keys. Well, how many keys you got? I was actually going to mention that. So it does have the titanium key. It does have a fob. And I think we got like three keys with it, three separate keys. They're pretty much brand new. The previous owner had ordered those. I was jealous. So the the titanium key doesn't work on the 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 second gen uh, mm -hmm. NA1s. Yeah, because it has a chip. Yep. Exactly. Yeah. So the keys with it, uh, titanium key looks pretty much brand new. Uh, three extra strets of keys. Um, it also has the NSX uh, brochure, I believe. You got we, the book, uh, the brochure. Got the yep. It's got the toolkit. It's got the toolkit. It's got the air pump. Uh, air pump. We also got a full car cover. We got all the stock parts. And the car comes with a bunch of service records, which we're still trying to get from the um, 
previous wholesaler that we purchased it from, a little bit of logistical issues, but we should have those. We should have at least copies of it showing all the service records and everything. And again, the car speaks for itself, obviously the condition it's in and stuff, but we should have the service records too. I mean, going back to, you've got the, you've got the car, it's mm -hmm. buttoned up. Yep. You've got some modifications done. You, it's an OEM plus uh, approach to it. It's low mileage, one owner. Black on black. Black on black. The, the seats, very minimal to nowhere, conditioned properly. Um, I, I talked about the interior sitting inside of it. You feel like you're sitting in a very low mileage car. You're not worried about any broken plastic pieces. Mm -hmm. And then you have all the, the extra small things that make it exciting when you mm -hmm. purchase new from dealer or from a collector's point of view, when you, you, know, you get the books, you get the, the different things, you got the car cover, I didn't have that. Yeah, no, I think the car covers, I don't think ever been uh, used either. Uh, but yeah, I think that uh, covers it. Did we miss anything else on the NSX or is that gonna be all of it? No, so what, how does somebody get their hands on it? What's the next step? So there? this car is going to be on Bring a Trailer. I think it's already in the queue. We just did the photo shoot, uh, which we have some really exciting photos to post on there. Uh, we are working on the full walk around of the car. That's going to show being a 1991, and that's my biggest thing is... Um, You're very realistic. We, we, exactly. So the cars are beautiful. You know, we can post 150, 200 photos of the car, we can post as many videos of the car. It looks beautiful. Being a 1991 is still gonna have some imperfections. You know, there's no way that a car that's been on the road for the last 30 years is not gonna have a scratch or dent on it. My goal always is to, in those walk around videos, which we're gonna, I think we already shot this one. Um, I point out all the flaws, all the defects, but the, the point of the podcast is to be able to talk more about it. Yep. But uh, it's gonna be live on Bring a Trailer. All these videos will be posted, uh, hopefully in the next two to three weeks, I think. It's gonna be live on Bring a Trailer. Next two to three weeks, this podcast might be live around that same time. And then uh, no reserve. So whatever it brings. If it brings $10,000, if it brings $500,000, whatever it sells for is what it's going to sell for. I mean, did you look at the recent comps recently? Yes, I did uh, <laughs> look at the recent comps on Bring a Trailer. Uh, believe it or not, Bring a Trailer comps are actually fairly low. We uh, think you were, I texted you that uh, photo of the NSX today and a couple other dealers that uh, were, uh, you know, NSX guys. There was a 16,000 mile one sold today, red on black, nothing too crazy of a spec, but it was a 16,000 mile. Uh, 91 NSX with no supercharger, no nothing, and that one sold for $100,000. That's at a dealer auction. So this dealer buying it, it's going to sell it for, you know, some sort of profit. Yeah, factor in their cost to transport, the recon they do, yep. time is money. Yep. Um, they have to kind of, you know, pay whatever overhead, yeah. commission, things like that, and, and, and land that car in somebody's mm -hmm. garage. Yeah, definitely not an apples to apples comparison because it had half the miles, still the same year, but half the miles of a 30,000 mile car is 16. It's not that big of a difference. Um, didn't have the supercharger, didn't have the KWs, didn't have the wheels, didn't have the brand new brakes, tires, all the stuff that we've done, but that's still at a dealer auction with, you know, okay condition because it still needs to be reconditioned, sold for hundred grand. So, I don't know, we'll see what it brings. It's a no reserve auction. Um, I think we covered most of what we needed to cover and I want to thank Nadim for uh, giving us his uh, input on the NSX and uh, his GT3 too. We're going to post some videos of his GT3 soon. But um, I think that covers everything. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you on the ne next podcast. Good stuff. Thank you.